Finals SAQ 21, Pulmonary Aspiration The fourth National Audit Project, NAP4, was published in 2011. A. Which factors are most likely to lead to an adverse airway event when using a supraglottic airway device, SAD? This includes patient factors, surgical factors, and anesthetic factors. Patient factors include obesity, known or predicted difficult airway, irritable airways such as asthma or recent chest infection, obstructive sleep apnea, and risk factors for aspiration, which includes obesity, failure of the lower esophageal sphincter due to reflux, hiatal hernia, previous upper GI surgery and gastroesophageal disease, increased abdominal pressure, pregnancy, drugs such as recent opioid-based analgesia, recent trauma, pancreatitis, pain, ileus, bowel obstruction, diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease affecting gastric emptying, failure to follow starvation advice preoperatively. Surgical factors include urgent surgery, inadequate fasting time, lithotomy, prone, semi-prone or Trendelenburg position, prolonged surgery, abdominal surgery, laparoscopic surgery, and shared airway surgery. Anesthetic factors that increases the risk of adverse airway event during supraglottic airway use includes anesthetists being junior, inadequate training, poor supervision, poor attention to detail, poor patient selection, and poor judgment. Use of SAD to avoid intubating patients with known or predicted difficult airway, difficulty sighting the supraglottic airway device, leading to problems during maintenance or emergence, light anesthesia, and first-generation SAD use. B. How would you recognize that a patient has regurgitated and aspirated gastric contents during an anesthetic administered by a SAD? Airway. Gastric contents visible in the oropharynx or tube of the SAD. Breathing. Desaturation, cyanosis, bronchospasm, increased airway pressures, or reduced tidal volumes in the ventilated patient, and abnormal auscultation. Signs for circulation includes tachycardia. C. How would you manage this patient? First, announce that this is an anesthetic emergency. Alert the theater team and call for help. Adopt an ABC approach and assess the patient and manage the patient simultaneously. Management of airway involves head down tilt with or without lateral tilt, removal of the supraglottic airway device and oropharyngeal suction. Management of breathing includes providing FL21, RSI with cricoid pressure and avoidance of stomach inflation, ideally tracheal suction prior to ventilation but oxygenation is paramount, positive pressure ventilation with PEEP, symptomatic treatment with bronchodilators if necessary. Ensure cardiovascular stability and manage as appropriate. Once the patient is stable, early bronchoscopy if particulate matter has been aspirated. Decision to continue with surgery depends on circumstances. Extubation or ventilation on ICU depends on clinical condition. If extubated, extended recovery stay for observation of respiratory rate, oxygen saturations or other signs of respi failure. Chest X-ray, increased index of suspicion for aspiration pneumonia and treat early. Antibiotics are not routinely advocated. Discussion with patient and or family followed up by a written information of what symptoms should prompt the patient to seek medical help. Additional questions. List the respiratory complications that the patient could develop in the next 48 hours. These include sustained hypoxia bronchospasm, pneumonitis, complications of barrel trauma such as pneumothorax due to high airway pressures, lobar collapse, pulmonary infection, and ARDS. Describe the strategies available to reduce the risk and impact of pulmonary aspiration of gastric contents in any patient. This includes avoidance of general anesthesia by use of regional anesthesia, local anesthesia or avoiding surgery, routine preoperative starvation, 
nasogastric or orogastric tube insertion and stomach drainage prior or during anesthesia, free medication with prokinetic drugs and acids, H2 receptor blockers and proton pump inhibitors, tracheal intubation instead of supraglottic airway device use, and second generation SAD use instead of first generation.